Today's video then, I figured I'd have a go over how my business has been doing the uh, packaging for all its products over the years. Uh, started out um, trying to keep things cheap and have gradually changed things over the years. So I figured this might be an interesting one or a helpful one for lots of people. So let's have a go through all this then. The first thing I started out with then was bubble wrap. So you start the uh, nice big rolls. This one's obviously been used up a lot. Uh, and then just pull it out and use it for things as small as coasters, uh, doing the stools, uh, benches. So basically whatever I can wrap, I'm using that uh, bubble wrap for. It's nice and cheap to get. This stuff here I've got is the, uh, this has got small bubbles. Uh, I also had the um, bubble wrap with the, the large bubbles. But I tended to find um, that double wrapping with the small ones was better than the big ones on their own because the big ones had uh, a big tendency to pop very easy, whereas the small ones don't. So that's something to, generally speaking, think of. Um, if I uh, put up some pictures on the screen now, I'll show you how uh, some of the products looked, like the stools. Um, the problem with the bubble wrap, however, one, it's a lot of plastic. But two, primary one, it takes a really long time to actually um, package things and it's not the best for impact in general. So I had to try and think of a way around this and um, so I've migrated onto other things now. Here I've got one of the uh, essential first things I got when I started this out. It's a strapping kit. Um, it's been handy for well, lots of packaging things like uh, tables onto pallets or uh, strapping two stools together so they uh, go as one bundle um, in deliveries. It's also been handy for clamping things together in the workshop and stuff, so it's been a pretty uh, useful tool. Uh, the one I got in particular uses um, this ropey material stuff uh, and these clips, so nice and simple. Do -do -do. Fold that up. Fold that over and uh, like that, and then there. Now it's nice and tight. Um, if you get these, uh, a key thing to do that is tight, but over time that will loosen. So always just do a simple, not like that, so it doesn't uh, pull out. Do the same on the other side. Um, again, this method it's handy because it technically means that these are reusable. So it's something to think about. Um, and something I also did, um, I went with the widest straps I could get. This is so when I'm um, strapping anything, because it's covering a wider area, it tends to um, dig into things a lot less when it's actually got uh, tightened up. So I've got two pieces of wood here then, um, got that one strapped together. So theoretically, you can do this by hand, um, by hooking it on. But it's a lot easier if you have this. This is the actual ratchet um, tension kit. It's pretty simple to use. So I'll just go over that now. So whoop. got the strap around the wood. Make sure it's under the two pieces. Yep, there we go. Around, swivel and over. And under we go. Does help if you get it in the right place. There we go. There. So that's on there. Just pull that as tight as you can. Ideally, you want to have this close to an edge so that you've got more space here to tighten things up. Because as you tighten it, it will pull it towards you. So that's pulled by hand as much as I can now. With this, there's a plate at the bottom there which clamps onto the bottom. And then the bottom goes up and round there. So let's do that now. And there. Through there. You also have to push down the handle when doing this. So, and then as soon as you let go, the pressure's on. And then have to, for this particular one, raise it up. And then that goes through whoop, there, which is the cutting part. And then through there, which is the part that actually tightens it up. 
Then once that's all in, there we go, nice and tight. And then in some case of push it down, pull it out, and there we go. That's on there. Can we get a tune out of this? Not very musical, but there. And then do that on the other side to get nice and tight, but it's really simple to use. Probably should have done that a bit longer so I can tighten it on. Um, but yeah, it's handy for lots of different things. Again, attaching things to uh, pallets or things together like this. I personally use it for the stickers for my kiln. It's been pretty handy for that. So yep, it's going to have some other things then. Moving on then to things I'm doing now. Coasters or small items. Um, instead of bubble wrapping, I swapped to Jiffy bags. They're nice, quick and easy. It's just a case of open it up, pop them in, and jobs are good. Um, I started out with the bubble wrap filled ones uh, to begin with though. Um, I've since moved on to paper, but uh, again, still the same. Uh, it's nice and simple. Whoop, where are they? Here's my coasters. Don't forget to check out these uh, things on visionlessdesigns.com. So it's just a case of pick, pick them up and chuck them in. Woo -hoo -hoo. And there you go. In this case, of that, there you go, and that's it. Pull them up and that's uh, ready for posting. Important thing to note with this um, so I tend to use Royal Mail. You need to be careful. Um, that everything stays flat when you hand it over because if you go to the counter and do it for example you can get a, end up getting charged £3 instead of £1.50 for example because it's slightly thicker. Um, it's also an idea with these if uh, for example someone only wants for example, two coasters um, you can cut these down and then tape up the end and you can get two envelopes out of this uh, which can be a bit of a saving, so I always go for ones that I can fit multiple things in and cut them down to fit borders. So, there we go. And again, these uh, these are the big, large, env large letter size envelopes I use. Um, I have got the paper ones here as well. Um, it's the exact same, but instead of having bubble wrap inside, it's all uh, paper padding. Which does mean, however, that these are heavier than them. It's probably only by a, a, a few grams, um, but when you're charged for weight as well, um, it can just be a little bit more, but in the grand scheme of things, it's fine. When I've got items that are a bit on the uh, big side for the small envelopes then, I've got uh, these here. So this is one of my table centerpieces. And this is the large Jiffy bags. So I tend to put the um, coat hangers or placemats if it's just a single one. So again, same as the paper padded envelopes. Really thick padded thing. Just in case of whoop, just pop them in. And probably with this, because you're not worried about uh, size as much because it's bigger than an envelope, it's just gonna fold it over and tape it down to whatever size it is. Um, these have been pretty handy, nice and thick, uh, so it's pretty good for the protecting things. So when I've got uh, items that are bigger than the placemats then, or there's multiple of them, I have my nice assortment of boxes here then. All uh, categorised nice and neatly. So super large boxes or stools um, will go in these big boxes here, and then it goes down slowly from there. What I've done with these is um, I got boxes that would take two stools stacked um, with the legs interlocking each other, so it makes it nice, quick, and easy. Um, same as I go down, so everything is sized appropriate, so I'm not making any, um, I'm not wasting anything when I'm doing the uh, the packing. So I've got here then the one of the boxes uh, that I've started assembling. Thing I forgot to mention, I go for the double wall cardboard boxes. They cost a little bit more, but the um, extra thickness and toughness of it means I don't have to worry as much about um, damage during delivery. 
I had tried uh, Screwfix's um, cardboard boxes. I would highly suggest checking out the reviews if they're still selling them because they gave us a really good laugh and yeah, they, they are that terrible. So yeah, I looked around and found these from Kite Packaging. They've been great, haven't had a problem with them so far. They do come with these, as you go down, notches here. That's so that we can cut the box down um, to fit whatever is inside it. So for example, I'm going to put one stool in this um, and I'll cut it down to fit the flaps on top of the legs uh, when it's done. Put this uh, log stool here, put it in, set it down like that. See, it's got a bit of room in there, but as we drop the, the box height down, the flaps will be sitting on there pretty nicely. Now the tabs have been cut then, you can see, that's, uh, that's where the original fold was there, we've cut down to here, so whoop, open it up. So there we go, it's got, when the lid uh, closes up, it's going to uh, have a um, lot less air, a lot less space in there to move around. However, it does still have space to swivel around a lot, so it needs some um, void filling. There's a lot of debate over um, how to do this. I was contemplating just stuffing bubble wrap into it, but then it's like, well, that's going to be pretty expensive. Um, the airbags that you can get, so the big, um, I believe it's like the air, air pillows that you can stuff in there. But again, that's a lot of plastic going in. And then I had a long think and was like, how do Amazon do it exactly? Oh yeah, paper fill. So let's have a look at how that works then. Over here then, I've got the paper roll then. So it's a nice simple machine then. Uh, it keeps it nicely all together in one area and a simple case of pull it out. And then whoops. It's basically like uh, ripping greaseproof paper, I believe. So, let's get that and then make a messy ball with it. And uh, the box. And then, whoop. let's see where's the leg. Stuff that in there. And then do that in all the legs. Um, and basically, that will stop it moving around and also gives it a bit of impact protection. I was a bit shocked at this if I was honest, I was, wasn't expecting paper to be able to do much, but yeah, as soon as you scrunch it up, that'll get really tight. I'll just fill this up and we'll see how it looks afterwards. All filled then, so if I just try and move that around, see it's nice and tucked in there. Surprising just how um, supportive the paper is, and a key thing with this as well is because it's all paper, um, you can put it all in your paper recycling, just obviously, you know, make the paper uh, a bit flatter, otherwise it's going to uh, fill up your waste um, pretty quickly. So yeah, just get some of this, fold that over, and then that'll be taped down now. So let's move on to that then. So when it comes to the tape then, um, we started out with uh, just normal cell tape, the 50mm wide stuff, which is, uh, no, I mean it's good all rounder in general, um, has good stick to it, um, cheap to get, so does the job, except um, personally uh, when I get parcels and I have to spend all my time pulling off every piece of tape in order to be able to put it in the recycling, it, frustrate, it frustrates me a lot, so why do I want, uh, why would I want my customers doing that as well? So um, I had a look around and I could get a gum tape dispenser which is, uh, does paper tape, which is recyclable, but that was extremely expensive to get. So I tried this um, adhesive uh, paper tape. So this one, as you can see, this is 75 mil wide. So it's got a much bigger area um, to get things on, which makes it easier. Uh, and it's technically better for heavier parcels because it's got more area to actually hold it down. Um, but we found this tape with the adhesive already on it. It sticks to itself okay. Cardboard and that, it's uh, not the best on. Um, and as soon as it gets uh, into a moist environment, so basically once it leaves my packaging area, 
which is uh, controlled. I've got a dehumidifier in here to keep um, it as dry as possible. As soon as we take it out, it all just starts peeling up. And really not what I want with my parcels um, or packages because, well, then I've got to worry about it all falling apart. So really would not recommend getting the, the paper tape. In order to use it, we have to basically wrap it around the parcels like a ribbon um, and then put the delivery labels on top of it to make sure it didn't peel off in the end. So I highly recommend avoiding these and just paying the extra cost and getting the dispenser, which we'll go over now. Take the dispenser then. So this big horrible thing here, um, reason I was put off from getting this initially, as I said, this costs about 250 quid. It's, uh, it's a bit of a, um, yeah, a bit of a big expense, but it's been great. So the way these work is you set the distance you want them to come out. I have to get someone else to set this for me. Um, and it's a simple case of you pull the lever, tape comes out um, at the required length and then automatically cuts it. So super handy. Um, you do have to be wary that obviously the tape is water activated so it's got a brush the tape has to go over as it comes out here see that so yeah it's got this weight to hold it down on hold the tape down on the brush as it goes over so yeah once it's um the way the gum tape works is once it's applied it fuses with the cardboard so it's tamper evident so it's not only is it strong, but you can clearly tell if someone's opened the box because they've literally torn the box to um, get in. There's the tape. There's that tape. Uh, that ain't coming off now. So nice, quick, and simple. And as it's um, automatically cut to the right size every time, it means there's no paper wastage. So well, tape wastage. And again, as it is all paper now, everything in here uh, can be recycled. So it's pretty handy for customers as well because they don't have to worry about peeling off every bit. Um, of it and separating everything out. Now this has uh, been just redone because uh, it's messed up while uh, trying to show off on a video. Um, one thing I will note is, whoop, I flip that up, we do do a cross on the bottoms of the boxes just to add that little bit of extra support to make sure it doesn't uh, break. But, um, once that's all done the next step is weighing them for deliveries because uh, a lot of deliveries tend to be done by weight. Um, so what I started out doing was uh, someone suggested to me, oh, what you can do is get some bathroom scales and then stand on it, weigh yourself, and then pick the box up afterwards. Don't do that. It's an absolute terrible idea. Uh, you waste a lot of time and it's also horribly inaccurate. So what you need to get is something like whoop, these. So these are parcel scales. You can get them pretty cheap. Um, the set here I got, uh, I think it can take a max of 250 kilos, so it should be able to handle uh, you know, these little boxes pretty handily. So, whoop, plonk it on there, and the set I've got, um, I think most uh, of the packing uh, scales, that's it, scales, um, they have a separate screen so that um, you're not having to try and move it around to see where it is, see what the weight is, there's a screen coming off it. Um, it's also handy uh, if you get one that you can plug into the mains. So this one uh, is battery powered and we can plug um, a cable into it so we don't have to worry about that. So it's very important you get the box weights correct. Um, there's a big difference when it comes to delivery prices, for example, with this uh, through Royal Mail, um, this could cost me seven pound. Nope, sorry, I'm thinking of a different one. 
12 pound or 30. It's down to the weight. So box size is what it is, but then the amount of weight in it affects the price considerably. So make sure you get it as correct as you can. Here we are then, that's all finished. So this may seem like it's a lot more expensive than the bubble wrap. And yes, technically materials on this are more expensive than the bubble wrap. But when you factor in the time it takes to um, bubble wrap things up versus this, and then consider wages, it's a lot cheaper doing um, it this way, paying a little bit extra for the materials. And I also don't have to worry about uh, replacements having to be sent out because of, uh, you know, wonderful delivery companies uh, throwing items around. Thanks for that. So, yeah, it's definitely worth it uh, in the long term. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing really much more to say on that. Box items are better, happier customers, and less hassle for you. Again, time it takes me to bubble wrap something. I could have made quite a few more of these. So, yeah. Just think of that. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Um, yeah, don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button down there and check out some of my uh, other videos. Hopefully I'll uh, be getting back into the swing of keeping up with these and see you in future videos then.